Shabbat Shalom. I'm Rabbi Yuri Koshun, and this is live from the century. I want to welcome our Beth Israel Messianic Synagogue members and all our podcast listeners from around the world. This is Shabbat on Saturday, April 17, 2021. So welcome to Beth Israel. It's so good to see you here. And I can see some smiles through the shields. So great. Welcome to Beth Israel. It's so good to worship the Lord together. So let us proceed with the Hebrew prayers. Let's welcome Brian Stone. Shabbat Shalom. Before we start our prayers this morning, I would like us, if we would, to continue to pray first for Rabbi David and Reverend Sandy, and then next, Vadim Lakeman, who has COVID-19 and is experiencing very severe, severe symptoms. Also for Becky Butler's uh, father, who's had open heart surgery yesterday, and Florence Wood's granddaughter, Amelia Riley. She had a seizure and has been admitted to the hospital. So if you would join me in prayer. Father, we come boldly before you this morning because that is what you told us to do. And we, first of all, thank you for your healing power and what you have done for Rabbi David. Father, we thank you for the progress that we see in him. And Father, we just ask that you continue your healing power in his body. Father, we just ask that you strengthen Rebus and Sandy. Father, that you lift her up, that you give her shalom. Father, we just come before you for Vadim. We ask that you touch him. And Father, that you, um, that you heal him. And that, Father, that he will overcome the COVID-19. And Father, we just ask that Becky Butler's father, have a good recovery from his open heart surgery. And lastly, for Florence Wood's grandfather, our granddaughter, we ask that you touch her. And Father, that you show what has happened to cause a seizure. Now we ask this all in the name of Yeshua the Father. I can't forget Mel Yari, who's back in the hospital with chest pains. Father, I ask that you touch Mel, who is a precious, precious member of this Mishpacha. Father, now we do do thank you for hearing our prayers. Amen. Amen. Would you join me in blessing the Lord? Bless the Lord, the blessed one. Blessed is the Lord, the blessed one for all eternity. Barkhuvet Adonai Hamevorat, Baruch Adonai Hamevorat, Leolam Vayed. And now the blessing of Messiah. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation in Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu et derech ha-Yeshua, be-Mashiach Yeshua. Amen. And now the Vei Shamaru, which gives us the scriptural basis for our meeting and for celebrating Shabbat. The children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat, observing it throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Shabbat to another, all flesh shall come before me, says the Lord.
if you would stand at home and face east. Prepare your hearts for the Shema, which is the watchword of Israel. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Baruch Shem Kevot Malkuto Leholam Bayeh. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha v'kol avaka u'v'kol nashaka u'v'kol mehodecha ve'hayu ha'davarim ha'hele asher hanoki mitzaka ha'yom aha l'lebeka Veshinatam Lebeka, Vedi Bartabam, Veshitaka Bebe Teka, Uvlek Teka Viderek, Ushak Pikaha, Uvikumeka, Ushar Tam Leot, Aha Yedeka, Ve Yahula Tatafo Benaneka, Uktav Tam Amazuzo Beteka, Uvishareka. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And have these words, which I command you this day, be upon your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you retire, and when you arise. And you shall bind them for sign upon your hand, and let them be frontlets between your eyes, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and upon your graves. That is the greatest commandment, to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our soul, and with all of our might. But Yeshua said, there's one that is equal to this, that all of the law rests upon the foundation of these two, Say with me, if you would. Ve'ahavta l'reka kamoka, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, please join me in the avot. Blessed are you, Lord our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and awesome God, the Most High God, who bestows grace and creates all, and remembers the kindnesses of the fathers, and brings a Redeemer to their children's children for his name's sake with love. O King, Helper, Savior, and Shield, blessed are you, O Lord, Shield of Abraham. <laughs>
distress, times of mourning, knowing that I have eternal hope because we serve a God who is risen. Amen. You, O Lord, are mighty forever. You raise the dead. You are mighty to save. You sustain the living with grace. Resurrect the dead with abundant mercy. Uphold the falling. Heal the sick. Set free those in bondage. And keep faith with those that sleep in the dust. Who is like you, master of mighty deeds? And who can compare to you, king who causes death and restores life and makes salvation? And you are faithful to resurrect the dead. Blessed are you, O Lord, who resurrects the dead.
blessed one. Blessed is the Lord, the blessed one, for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Oh, you may be seated. Uh, today, the uh, Torah portion is Leviticus 14.24. Belachach hakohem, hakohen, et keves ha-asham ve'et lo Hashemen, Vete Nif, Otam, Hako Hen, Tenupa, Lifne, Adonai. Amen. Amen. Need some sleep. I'm sorry. The English, finally. I think. And the priest shall take the lamb of the trespass offering and the log of oil, and the priest shall wave them at the waved offering before the Lord. Amen. Amen. The reading this morning is from 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 9. Vayomru ish el reyehu lo ken anaknu osin hayam haze yom vaseira hu vaano vaanu mak shin vahi kinu excuse me od for haboker umza a nu va avan va ata naku vana boa vana gida 
Beit HaMelech. This is a conversation between two um, or four, I believe, lepers that have just found the entire camp of their enemy empty. And they say to one another, we aren't doing right. This day is a day of good news. And if we hold our peace, if we wait until the morning light, punishment will overtake us. Now, therefore, let us go and tell the king's household. Amen. And now for the Brit Hadashah. Shabbat shalom. The Brit Hadashah is from Matthew 8, verse 4. Amar lo Yeshua re'e al de maper le ish avar lech hare et el hakohem veka erev et hakrevan ashet siva moshe le edut lachem. And Yeshua said to him, See that you tell no one, but go your way and show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded and as a testimony to them. Amen. Amen. Would you rise as we return the Torah to the ark? It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it, and those who support it are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Bring us back, Lord, to you, and we shall come. Renew our days as of all. It's Let us thank our reader, readers. for blessings on this land, in our hearts. Hallelujah, oh holly, hallelujah.
the chains fall from our hearts in praise in your grace and through your son I love victory that he won make us more to walk in
on our eyes on you and we will come. Help us to keep our eyes on you, no matter what's going on in our life. Help us to praise your name, to worship you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless your holy name.
one more time. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. Lord, we bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We praise you. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place, Lord. Thank you for Shabbat. Thank you for this time of worship, Lord. Worship to you, Lord. Thank you so much. Please receive our worship, Lord. Receive our prayers, Lord. Receive, Lord, in the name of Yeshua. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, dance team. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for leading prayers. Thank you, readers. I would like to thank also sound team and media team and uh, I mean what to do what we would do without them thank you so much thank you for making this service possible now I want to give special thanks to all who are faithful supporters of Beth Israel such support gives us stability and allows us to expand our efforts to serve our community I believe the Lord is pleased with our faithfulness to him if Beth Israel is a blessing for you, please consider blessing Beth Israel as well. As that allows us to be a blessing to steal others. We are grateful for your cheerful generosity and the uh, uh, sacrificial giving of your tithes and offerings. You can find information about how to give online at bethisraelnow.com slash giving. Our online giving platforms are giving Fire and PayPal, both very secure and easy to set up. And for all of us who are, uh, who are here today, please put your tithes and offerings in the drop box in the lobby uh, after the service. Thank you so much. And now let's go into scriptures and let's open uh, Leviticus chapter 13. We have very interesting place of scripture for tonight, for to, 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 today, I'm sorry. So in the chapter of today's Torah lesson, we read much about leprosy. Leprosy, a terrible disease of the ancient world, and also about the birth of a child. Two Torah chapters in one today. In both cases, God saw the people were in unclean state and needed to be separated from society until they were no longer unclean. So let's read Leviticus chapter 13, verse 46. It's a very interesting place. All the day during which the plague is on him, he will be unclean. He is unclean. He is to dwell alone outside of the camp will be his dwelling. So please, let's imagine right now. Long before the advent of modern medicine, the thousands of years before, before the discovery of the harmful bacteria and viruses, when the rest of the pagan world did not even have a clue that diseases could transmit it, the Lord speaks of isolation from each other as a way to preserve the people of Israel. Is it interesting? I think it is very interesting for us. Way before, they had no clue, but their obedience to the scriptures actually saved their lives and saved the nation of Israel. The word unclean in Hebrew is a concept that means, that means a person's ca a condition in which he was forbidden not to only be in close contact with people, but even during services and at, at times when services were made to God. And when I read the place of scripture about, uh, about isolation and uh, what's going on there, you know, I, I came with an idea. Do you know what is the most joyful part of separation? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> when the time of separation ended, for sure. It's the beginning and it has the end. And this is the joyful moment. At that time, he would be examined by priests who would pronounce the person clean so that he could return to a full-fledged spiritual and social life. 
It was a wonderful moment of freedom for such a person. He could again come to the temple to worship and serve God after his time of separation. And this required faith and obedience to God and to the priests who made the decision about his healing. It required an obedience. What I would like to show today is that his restoration to health and to his family, although it was a time for rejoicing for such a man, still it was not an easy process, neither for him nor for his family and those who around him. You know why? One of the reasons, the main reasons, often people, even after their complete healing, still bore the stamp of illness as a result of the disease, and specifically leprosy. To face life in such a state, even though in good health, must have been a difficult proposition, requiring great faith in God, humility, patience, and obedience. Why is that? Because for many people, for many who went from that state, life never returned to its former state, as they would still be seen as unclean by other people. A danger to others and lepers for the rest of their lives in the eyes of some people. Still, they had to rebuild their lives the best way they could. And they had to serve God. Let's say it together. They had to serve God. And the most important thing for them was that they do not remain forever isolated within themselves, in their hearts. They need to go out. For us who have had to spend time in seclusion or experience a separation, it can be very much the same. For example, after the loss of a dear person, we experience a time of sorrow and loneliness, followed by, by the time of recovery. And it is necessary to find strength inside of us in faith to return to life as usual, to return to God's plan for our lives, to not stuck in this condition, rather than to remain in the prison of self-isolation. The Lord gave, gave us mercy. He gives us mercy. One of the striking examples of this in the book of Matthew, and let us read uh, Matthew 26, verse 6. I, don't, I, I won't read the whole chapter, but I would, would like to read one verse. Matthew 26, verse 6. That's an, a great example for us. Now, while Yeshua was in Bethany, he was in Bethany, where he was in Bethany, <laughs> at the house of Simon the leper. So he was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. <laughs> Simon the leper is a very curious example for us, very curious. The Bible calls him a leper, not the one who was a leper or the one, Simon, who was healed of lepers. The Bible calls him the Simon, the leper. Is it correct? Or can you check me? Maybe it's, it's in my Bible. <laughs> Maybe your Bible says uh, who was a leper or who had problem with leprosy. Now he's healed. Simon, the leper. Is it correct? Oh, thank you for, for communicating. It is clear from the scriptures that he was already healed at that moment. He was healed. But for some people around him, he would forever remain Simon, who? The leper. Even after his healing, he would be seen to people who were, who were around him as a Simon, the leper. But you know what? What the truth is. But this attitude that some people had towards him did not leave him in self-isolation. He was free, not only in his body, but also in his heart. A state of self-regret or complaining about his fate. In fact, he served the Messiah with his belongings. 
And one of the most beautiful stories about Yeshua's preparation for death took place in his house. House of whom? Simon the leper. <laughs> he really didn't care about what people think about him. Okay, leper, what to do? Yeshua, welcome. <laughs> I want to serve you. Be my guest. Be in my house. How often can we apply this passage from the Bible in our lives today? This cruel world inflicts wounds on us, sometimes cripples our souls and bodies. This is true of this life. And sometimes even after we come to the Messiah, after we come to the Messiah, after we accept him by faith into our lives, still we can bear the scars of those wounds, the after effects of past illnesses and battles in our soul, in our hearts. Sometimes these are wounds in our heads, our memories. Sometimes they are broken relationships that may never be restored. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes they are character trails, traits that we find very difficult for us to cope with. Perhaps some will see us as lepers forever, contagious forever, unhealthy until our final de death on earth. But don't let that stop us from serving God. I would like to repeat again. Don't let people stop us from serving the Lord. This quiet here. <laughs> because it is an important truth. Do not let people stop us from serving the Lord. I can imagine that to some people... The house of Simon the leper would be contagious forever because he was a leper. But Yeshua paid Simon a visit. He came to his house. He was in his house. He was in his place. Perhaps you are now experiencing a life of isolation. Keep the faith. Do not be discouraged. Do not give up hope. Keep Yeshua in your heart. And you know what? Yeshua will keep you. And when the time comes and you regain your freedom, return to the faith. Serve God with everything in you. Serve him as Simon the leper did, with even more fire and dedication that you had before. It is an opportunity to serve the Lord. And we know that there's Numerous examples in the Bible of the Lord healing people from the leprosy. And we can draw some important lessons from some of these today. So let's, let us open uh, Luke chapter 17, one of the most famous places about healing of the leprosy. Luke 17, verse 11, starting with verse 11. And please remember one very important truth. He wants us to be healed and restored. It is his will. It is the will of the Lord. And in his plan, even those who are impure by the law and are outside the camp are not deprived of the opportunity for forgiveness and cleansing. He always wants to heal us. He always wants to be with us. So let us read Luke chapter 17, starting with verse 11. Now, while going up to Jerusalem, Yeshua was passing between Samaria and and the Galilee. So, very interesting place here already. <laughs> so, he was, let's say, somewhere. What a description here. Yeah, I mean, very accurate. Where he was, somewhere. <laughs> yeah, between uh, Jerusalem and Samaria, somewhere. <sighs> it really can happen everywhere, anywhere. Right here, the Lord is his, here. So Yeshua was passing between Samaria and the Galilee as he entered a certain village. Ten men with leprosy came towards him. They stood some distance away and raised their voices saying, Yeshua, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the Kahanim, Leviticus. Today's chapters of the Torah. <laughs> Show yourselves to the Kahanim, to the priests. 
as, and as they went, they were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back, glorifying God with a loud voice. And he fell at Yeshua's feet, face down, giving him thanks. It was the act of worship to Yeshua. He bowed down before Yeshua, giving him praise and thanks for his healing. Then he, uh, weren't any, uh, I'm sorry. Then Yeshua answered and said, weren't ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Weren't any found who came back to give glory to God except this foreigner? He was Samaritan. Then Yeshua said to the man, stand up and go. Your faith may, has made you well. In Greek, we can also read here, uh, it can be translated as your faith saved you. <laughs> stand up. Your faith has saved you. You can go. You're free right now. You're free. What interesting. This passage of scripture holds many important lessons for us. We have time, we, we have time to look at only a few of those because we can go for days, literally for days, to look in this place. So let's take a look at a few lessons. First, the lepers recognized Yeshua's power and authority. It is very important to remember. They saw him from the far and they recognized the, his power and his authority. Interestingly, of all the words, Luke chooses the word master in order to show how these lepers approach Yeshua. In the New Testament, the Greek epistathis is used only by Luke, this special word, master in Greek, only by Luke, and is commonly used by the apostles of Yeshua and his disciples who followed him. It's a very specific word. It was a word which showed great honor. It describes a person who has significant authority, significant power. This is why it is used in relation to Yeshua. Master, heal us, have mercy on us. So therefore, when ten lepers turn to Yeshua calling him Master, Luke wants to show that they were recognized Yeshua's authority and his power. Really, they recognized his authority. Perhaps they were aware of the many healings performed by Yeshua during his ministry. And please remember that he was the only hope they had. The only hope. They had no Baptist health care there. Or what else in Jacksonville? Mayo clinics. Hopeless. Nothing there. This was their last chance. There was no other way out of this difficult situation. No medication. No other decisions. These people were desperate. They came to Yeshua in desperate state. Desperate state. The second lesson. They came to Yeshua in humility and faith. When I read this place, it really struck me this time. Really struck me. They shouted from afar. Have mercy on us. Let's say, have mercy on us. You know, some people would come with prescriptions. You know, Lord, please, you know, uh, I have problems here, there. And could you please, if you can, I don't know, if it's possible, would you please this and that and five, ten. So they had only one. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. What a state. The lepers admit that they are in a miserable situation. They cannot solve their problem. So it's the finish, it's the end, that end for them. Such an expression, have mercy on us. It's very interesting, specific expression. To use these words tells us, very obviously tells us, and, told it, and it told Yeshua that they knew beyond all doubt that he was able and had the power to heal them. They weren't asking him, if you can, or if you are able, or do you have a power to heal us? For them, it was obvious. They plead for mercy. It was not a question for them. Can he heal them or not? 
They just ask, please have mercy on us. Let's say, have mercy. Actually, it's a good prayer. It's a good prayer. Have mercy. But it also tells us of the humility of those people. They were not arrogant people. You know, the truth is, mercy cannot be earned, captured, or purchased. There is only one way to inspire mercy, through humbleness. This is the way how to receive mercy from the Lord. Be humble before him. You know, the truth is, with such a demonstration of faith in their hearts, it is not a surprise that Yeshua immediately answered their prayers. <laughs> immediately. He saw faith in their hearts. A great miracle. The cleansing of ten lepers took place and in an instant, with no special prayers, no laying on of hands. It simply happened because of their faith and his mercy. <laughs> their faith and his mercy met together. And it was the moment of healing for them. They had faith and asked for mercy. There's another very specific and special point that we must understand about this healing, specific healing. According to the interpreters of the Torah and the rabbis of those days, cleansing from leprosy was one of the most obvious signs of the Messiah. The Messiah who's supposed to come and he will have an authority to heal lepers. It was the sign of Messiah. That is why Yeshua answered the question of Yehonan the Mercer when he asked him, are you Messiah or not? He, he told him, tell them, tell him that lepers are cleansed. It's the miracle. So knowing the messianic aspirations and expectation of those days, we can assume that at least one of them, at least one of them, I don't know how many of them, but at least one of them, saw the Messiah in Yeshua and believed in his power to cleanse the leper. At least one of them had this faith. And most likely, most likely, I'm guessing here, but it looks like for me, if you know the expectation of those days, they were expecting the Messiah to come. And one of the signs of Messiah was to heal the lepers. And here he is, healing the lepers. It is obvious. Most likely it was one of one who returned to worship him. And you remember, now one of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back glorifying God with the loud voices. And he fell at Yeshua's feet face down in worship, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. <laughs> amazing story. It's an amazing story. Yeshua didn't rebuke him. He didn't say, stand up, don't do that. You know why? Because Yeshua is the Messiah. He accepted his worship as the Messiah, <laughs> as the Son of God. It was appropriate to do. A Samaritan he was, one of the outcasts with whom Orthodox religious Jews refused even to talk. Yet this outcast was the only one who understood who Yeshua was, who returned to bow before him, to praise him for healing and cleansing, and to receive salvation of his soul. Stand up. Your faith has saved you. I don't know how about you. I want to hear these words. Stand up. Your faith has saved you. <laughs> It's not enough to be healed. It's not enough to be restored. There's more. There's salvation of your soul. There is eternity with the Lord. There is forgiveness and mercy of the Lord. Way beyond only, only healing. The third lesson for us is that true gratitude, a faithful heart is one of the qualities one of the elements of a true faith. It is very important to have gratitude. It opens doors to God's miracle. Gratitude attracts the presence of the Lord. Anyone, even Yeshua, would be more open to serve someone who is grateful. It is, 
you open the door for miracle in your life with gratitude. No surprise that the prayer Yeshua taught us begins with gratitude and praise to God, our Father who is in heaven. Your name is Kadosh, holy. Thank you, Father, for everything. I want to tell you today one of very important truths from the Bible. Don't say anyone, please. It's between us. If you're watching right now online, do not, do not tell anyone. Do not tell anyone. Truth is that the Lord wants to cleanse you, heal you from internal wounds and pains. He wants you to be free of fear. Luke chapter 5, verse 12 and 13. This is the same story with different, uh, different scene, but the same idea. Here is this. The leper one comes to Yeshua and he asks him, Master, if you are willing, you can make me clean again. It is not a question of can you heal me or not? Are you able to heal me or not? It's the only one question. If you are willing, please, please, Lord, cleanse me. Yeshua stretched out his hand and touched him. <laughs> it was against the rule of the law. But you know what? He is the ruler. <laughs> He gave this law to Moses. He is clean. And he makes us clean by his touch. So he stretched his hand and touched him saying, I am willing. Be cleansed. I'm willing. These are his words to you today. Do not say anyone. He's saying to you, I am willing. Be cleansed. There's no doubts. There's no doubts. One more story for today. Naaman, another instructive story. Let's read 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1. Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man, in his master's sight and highly esteemed, he was a general of a great army. Syrian Empire. Because through him Adonai had given victory to Aram, though the man was a mighty man of valor, everything's great. One small problem, he was leper. Great man, general, a strong authority, but he's a leper. What to do? Death in front of him. Naaman fought with Israel. He took prisoners, and it ha as happens in war, he killed people. He captured an Israeli girl. Maybe he killed her parents or took her away by force. In any case, he was a cruel man because he was a general. Surely he thought of Israel as a defeated people, having a God who could not save them from the hand of the Syrians. He was sure because he had a victory, previous victory over Israel. And suddenly the disease. Naaman, so successful and one so strong, suddenly found himself hopelessly ill and there was no one who could help. Leprosy is a slow, painful leading to certain death sickness. But then help came to Naaman from a most unexpected place. The captive, the little slave girl, told Naaman about a man in Israel who conquered the conquered nation who could heal him. And can you imagine his uh, mentality at that moment? How hard it must have been for Naaman to change his mentality. Yesterday, he fought against Israel. It was yesterday. And today, he must go humbly to a defeated people as a supplicant, begging for mercy, hoping for sympathy. <laughs> yesterday, he was victorious. Today, he needs to humble himself. So let's just read from verse 9. So Naaman came with his horses and his chariots, a general, the great man, a uh, very rich person, 
great power. So he comes to the prophet full of glory with his belongings, his chariots, <laughs> with his pride of the general and stood at the doorway of the house of Elijah. And verse 10, here's Elijah. So Elisha sent him a messenger, his servant, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be clean. Verse 11. Can you imagine Naaman here? Please turn on your imagination. <laughs> Think about his reaction. Here he is coming to prophet, and servant came out and said, Go wash your yourself in, in Jordan. Don't bother my, my, my master. <laughs> Go wash yourself. But Naaman was angered and walked away saying, I thought he would surely come out to me and do great ministry of uh, healing. Yeah. He would surely come out to me, stand and call on the name of Adonai his God and wa wave his hand. <laughs> so he already knew what <laughs> prophet is supposed to do. <laughs> and wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Aren't Emana and Perpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters in Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be clean? Clean. So he turned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached him and spoke to him and said, My father, in the pro if the prophet had told you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more then when he told you only to wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. Then his flesh was restored like a flesh of a little child, and he was clean. <laughs> Verse 15. When he returned with his entire retinue to the man of God and came and stood before him, he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Now, please, accept a present from your servant. But Elisha said, As Adonai before whom I stand lives, I will accept nothing. Naaman pressed him to accept, but Elijah refused. So Naaman said, If not, then please let your servant be given to mute, mule lots of soil, for your servant will no longer offer burnt offering or sacrifice to any other God except Adonai. <laughs> I don't know what was the reason, but perhaps the reason Elijah did not come out to meet the great general is that he wanted to leave Naaman alone with God's word. Naaman would have uh, to make a clear choice, either yes or no, either follow the instructions or go home and die. But Naaman obeys and uh, the results are incredible. Not only does the Lord change the life of the general, but also the political situation in Syria and Israel through this healing. Naaman, formerly one of the most powerful enemies of Israel, becomes a friend to Israel and a follower of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Only our Lord is capable to do that. Let's say only our Lord is capable to do that. Amen. I would like to uh, finish with one interesting idea. It is very interesting that the name Naaman in Hebrew means faithful. Faithful. This word has the same root as the word emunah in Hebrew, faith. Indeed, faithfulness to God and faith in him results in miracles in our lives. Amen. James 4, 6, but he gives great, great, greater grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Amen. Thank you so much for your uh, intention. Let, uh, let us close this service with ironic benediction. Let us stand before the Lord and receive, receive this prayer. In the end, I want to remind you that if Beth Israel is a blessing to you, please consider to be a blessing to Beth Israel. And let us receive this prayer with our hearts.
Євреха Донай Вишмереха, Єра Донай Пане Велеха Віхунеха, Іса Донай Пане Велеха, Веясем Леха Шалом. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Шабат шалом, мишпаха. Шабат шалом.